hello everybody i'm gonna get this off my face right quick for a moment what's up everybody how you doing this is pastor davis and uh i'm here with my faithful few in the house and uh and i got my faithful few on um online uh come on in invite a friend i like how that rhyme come on in invite a friend it's bible study time come on in i got you listen i'm i'm a i'm a i'm a, I'm a rhymer bye bye, bye miss debbie take care dear listen uh, we're going to jump into Bible study a little bit. All right. See you later, darling. Um, I'm saying bye to Miss Debbie, y'all. She's going home for the day. That's that's good for her because it's 7 o'clock. Normally, Miss Debbie out of here by like 9, 930. So, you know, uh, she's getting out of here early tonight. All right. Guess going to retirement to do you that way. All right. Listen, we're, we're going to go ahead and get in. I'm a little tired. Uh, I was outside with the uh, National um, Day Out with a Cop or something like that that we had. And so I was out there representing Martin Temple. And uh, and saw a lot of good things, shook a couple of hands and said hi to a few people and uh, came on back so we could be prepared for Bible study tonight because we've been talking about unity. There's a few things I want to make sure that we hit about as it relates um, to unity. And if you saw, I see S Sister Bernice Harris, how you doing? Sister Miller, how are you? Sister Barbara Gordon, how are you doing? Uh, Sister Paul Lisa Evans from the Grace Amazon Church in Raleigh, North Carolina. God bless you. Good to see you on here as well. Uh, I see Sister Johnson. I see Sister uh, Fournette. I see, um, okay, that's, Be listen, that's Beverly and Johnny Johnson. Sister Johnson, I'm praying for you. I got your message this morning. I've been ripping and running. Um, but your boot and your sandal match. I meant the best with you about that. I said, look at you. You got, you, you, you hurt, but matching at the same time. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Look at you. All right, Sister Joyce Tate, good to see you on here. Sister Angela Weathers works so hard and good to see you on as well. Listen, we want to get into this Bible study. I pray and promise not to keep you long tonight, but I want to make sure that we effectively talk about some things. Listen, I don't want to shout tonight, none of that stuff. I just really want to talk about uh, unity as we will continue on with it. Uh, coming out of coming out of um, church conference, I was really on a motivational and spiritual climb, uh, climate level that um, I wanted to make sure that we capitalize on that and really, really, really home into what the teachings that were given to us. And so we're going to go back over a few of those, um, maybe not tonight, but we will go back over a few of those. Hello, Sister Tommy Zine Miller. All right. So we will go over a few of those, but probably not tonight. This is what I want to do. I want to open up with a word of prayer. And when we open up with a word of prayer, we'll jump into Bible study. I think I got one announcement before we jump into prayer. September, we will start Noonday Bible study. Yay, it's coming back. Noonday Bible study is coming back. If I was in the studio and I had my little board, I would hit, put the hand claps. They'd be like, yay, woo, all that other stuff, right? So Wednesday, Noonday Bible study is coming. This is what I believe, but I want everybody to catch me. You know, it's good to be online and it's good to see that. And I really thank God for seeing everybody online. But it's really different when you come into the house of God and able to commune and really talk and hear one another's voice. The tam it's something about the timbre of someone's voice that can really do a lot um, for understanding. OK, uh, and so I definitely want you all to uh, please make it your business. If seven o'clock is not your time and given <laughs> given the attendance, it might not be a lot of people's time. Uh, I get it. Uh, but um, if uh, you want to come out, I believe we're going to do it Wednesdays at noon. If you want to come out for that, we'll have it as well. So definitely want you to uh, consider being in person, not only just for worship, also for Bible study. OK, let's get into a word of prayer. Sister Rayner, won't you lead us in prayer if you don't mind? Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to see another day that we have never seen before. Thank you on today, God, for everything that took place. God, thank you, God, for your word on today, God. Thank you, God, uh, for allowing us, God, to be in our right minds, Father, in good health, Father, with full activity of our limbs on today, Father. Thank you on today, God, uh, for strength, for your grace, for your mercy, God, just for your love, your compassion, and your kindness. God, we ask on today, God, that you would remove everything that has taken place, God, 
throughout this day, God, any weight, God, any distractions, Father, we find them now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the word on tonight. We bless God on tonight, God, for the teacher, God. We ask now that you would strengthen him even the more right now as he sits. God, refresh him now. Thank you for a fresh word, God, on tonight. God, we thank you for unity. God, we thank you, God, that we are becoming even more unified, not just with you, God, but with each other, Father. Thank you on today, God, for what's going to take place. Open our hearts, our minds, our ears, God, to what you have to say to us on tonight through your vessel. And we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we give you honor because you are worthy of it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So uh, last week we started talking about unity. And... As we were talking about unity, a few things came up, and I want to make sure that we lift to light some of the things we talked about. Now, one thing I hope you're doing is I hope you don't have Bible study on and then your favorite show at the same time. You know, we have Family Feud on and Will of Fortune. Y'all know he's still spinning that wheel, y'all. It's crazy. You, it's, 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 you know, we got all that stuff. Uh, we have uh, the prices, right? No, that come on early in the day. Well, whatever it is, and you probably buy your stove turning something and stuff like that. And I get that. But um, we need to sit back and really just home into the teaching of what's going on. And I want us to get it. Um, also, I do believe this. And I said this a lot of times before. And, and I don't really mix words with this because I think it's true. And I think most pastors would agree. Um, Tuesday, Tuesday night Bible studies, when we have Bible study, is where you get the temperature pulse in the heart of the pastor. Right. The heart of the leader. And you really can really dive into the heart of what God wants for us. And so, you know, I, I really want us to consider um, the importance of Bible study. All right. I really want you to consider the importance of it because, um, you know, it's vitally important. So anyway, we, I, I get off that. However, last Tuesday night, we started talking about. Um. um So, okay, gotcha. All right. So what I feel, I'm sorry, I had something come in. I had to read it. So what I do feel is when we talk about the church and when we talk about unity, what does that mean? Because a lot of times we think what the world is in unity is what the church is in unity. And they're totally two different things. So I was a high school band director for about seven years and I was a middle school band director for four years. I mentioned this a lot because I learned a lot by directing the band. I learned a lot by reading scores that were all over the place, but you had to sound together and this, that, and third. And what I found out about uniformity is, check it out, just because you look the same don't mean you really on the same one accord. All right. Um, I think we had the conversation in, in choir rehearsal. We were talking about robes and uh, robes look uniform. This, that, third. We were talking about unity. Yeah, just because you wear the same thing, or just because you look the same way, and just because the usher boy might wear the same outfit, and just because the preachers might have on the same robe, don't necessarily make people uniform. I want you to catch this. I'm not knocking none of that. I'm not saying that it's not important. I'm not saying that those things don't need to happen. But what I'm saying is, that does not make us uniform. Remember, we said unity is not what you see. It's what you experience. Right. And so um, when we look at it, because uh, we studied Acts chapter two a little bit last last um, last Bible study. And so uh, we're going to get into Ephesians because Ephesians really talks about a whole lot about unity. So when we're dealing with unity and we're talking about how we're to operate. A lot of times, you know, I would tell my kids when we get ready for a show, everybody's going to have on the same thing. If one person has it on, everybody has it on. If one person missed their hat, nobody's wearing a hat, right? Because everybody looking crazy. Uh, you know, we ain't, ain't going to have all that. If one person don't have their spats, after I fuss them out until Jesus comes, <laughs> they probably going to get a zero and sit to the side, just depending on what they played, right? Uh, you know. If, if, if one person in the group go to the restroom, everybody going to the restroom, right? That's just how we, that's how it's uniformity. Because when we rise, we rise together. And when we fall, we fall together. You will learn so much from sports activities, from different groups that you've had to be uniformed in. And what I discovered was that just because they had on the same uniform didn't make them walk in step. 
Oh, my God. Lord knows I know that, man. When I got my scores back from marching scores, I was like, man, it was him on the 20-yard line. I told you, boy, not to do that, right? Because you had the uniform on. You looked the same. But it wasn't unity. It wasn't unified. Um, you know, we had dance girls. We had flag girls. You know, there's a point in time where you got to toss the flag together so it will land, uh, land together. And if one person was off with the toss and it was time wrong, it threw the whole ripple off. It threw the whole around the world off, the drop spin, the around the world. I know of all y'all. It threw everything off. Although you had the same flag, same pole, same uniform, no unity. You were in the band. I, I used to have a way to spell. I used to ask my kids, how do you spell band? And they would say, B, everybody does everything together, D. That's how we spell band. That's That, that was it because we did everything together. But it wasn't their uniform that made them unified. It was the mindset that makes them unified. When your mind is unified, it makes what you have on more meaningful. Right. I, I, I want everybody to kind of get that because you can dress the part and not be a part. You know, and, and, and I think I think a lot of times people understand that um, don't 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 understand that what I have on don't make me unified. Right. But it is how I act, how I what I say. In the things that I do that makes me unified, we have a whole church to come worshiping together, but not unified, praising God together, not unified, giving, but not unified. But we have to come on together in one place and on one accord. And the word tells us, as we studied last Sunday in Acts chapter two, then you will hear that sound. You will experience what unity is really like. Oh, my God, what would it be like? If we were in worship and everybody was just unified, not with a physical posture of praise, but with a spiritual posture of praise, yes. Yes. what would it look like? I, I simply just believe that there's not a sickness that can't be healed. Lord, I feel like preacher brought up my head. I, I really do. I feel like there's no demon that can't be cast out, no stronghold that can't be destroyed. If we are unified and we begin to care about our brother and our sister, not what they think about you, not what you think about them, but how you all are trying to reach God together. All right. And so unity, we learned, is not necessarily uniformity. No, no, that ain't that ain't necessarily that's not necessarily unity. All right. Yeah, I understand. We want to be uniform. I want the usher boy to look the same. All that stuff looks nice. But it, but beyond them. But listen, but beyond them looking the same, this is what I need for them to do. I need them not to necessarily look the same. I need them to have the same mindset. My musicians. Yeah, I want them to be on one accord. I want the timing to be right. But I want them to have the same mindset. Yeah, I want the choir to look good. Uh, I, I want everybody to, 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 to have on their Sunday's best, this, that, but I need everybody to have the same mindset. Same mindset. That, that's all it is. Let the same mind be in you. That is also in Christ Jesus. And if Christ Jesus is in you and he's in me, we ought to have the same mindset. Right? You know, and so I think the divisive natures, oh, Lord, thank you, Holy Ghost. The divisive natures that you find within the church, we have to stop blaming the devil alone. Sometimes it's just you. It's just us. It's just our unwillingness to come alongside one another and know those that labor among you. Be in love or, or, or be in love and charity with your neighbor. Right. Like like we, we have to understand that those are the things that we're called to do to have same mindset. Listen, I just believe this, that this is this is one reason why. OK, I, I put it to you like this right here. Oh, another, every, I don't know. OK, so I, I'll say it like this right here. There are some cultures that know how to be under one accord. You you can go. I was talking with a um, uh, when I was back home, I was talking with a Korean uh, young person and they said that um, nobody is able to buy a house until everybody's able to buy a house. So they live under one, this is what she said her family did. They lived under one roof 
and they had one business until the other family was able to get their house and start their business. And then to the other families able to get their house and start their business. So what they did was they had the same mindset. Now they was, she, she, she said for the first part of her life, she couldn't stand it. Everybody was cramped under one roof, but she sees the financial wisdom and how it invested in her family. And now none of them are struggling. They all have their own, but they all started with the same, same mindset. All right. That is not about the one it's about the whole ants. That crawl on the ground that irritate us understand the value of unity. They will move in order. They will march together. They will get the same piece of sugar and piece of bread that fell on the ground. Listen to me now. You get the same piece of bread that fell on the ground and they will march. Go get it. Take it back to the place where they came from. And they all do it together. And this and then this and now I want you also understand about it because, you know, when I cut grass, I see these little ant moles and ant hills and stuff like that. And I would run over them and stuff like that because I just I just want to destroy them. I didn't like it. But after a while, when I come back, what I thought I destroyed, they built back up. My brother, you can you 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 got something you think you can destroy. It. it will come right back up because they have the same mindset. That what has been destroyed, we can rebuild. We can we can do it again because they're oh God I want you to understand it because their survival depends on their unity God I need somebody to get that in your spirit their survival depends on their unity they know that if they don't have a place where they are unified they will scatter and die but they understand the power of unity so that's what they do. All right. And listen, and if ants and, and insects can have uh, uh, a mindset of unity, what makes us? All right. So we also talked about denominational loyalty is not unity. All right. I don't care. You could be AME, AME Zion like we are. You could be Baptist, Pentecostal, uh, um, non-denominational still is a denomination. I don't care what nobody say. Listen, it, it is what it is. All right. Listen, your denomination does not make you unified. Here it does. Now, this is what it does. It grounds you in some truth, but it's not necessarily unity. All right. Okay. Amy, Amy Zion Churches, we have some article of religions that kind of ground us, right? They ground us and it keeps us unified um, as we, as we, um, know it to be our faith in God, but it doesn't necessarily unify us as we do our workings towards God. Right. And so although you have denomination, see, the problem is a lot of times we think we have denominational loyalty and somehow that's going to get us into heaven. Uh, somehow that's what God wanted us to do. I'm loyal to my church to the day I die. You can be loyal to a church and unloyal to the kingdom of God. I need somebody to understand what I just said here. Now you can be loyal to a denomination and unloyal to the kingdom of God. Because before you pick up the Bible, you pick up the discipline. Right? The church law said, da 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 What would the word say? Now your discipline should be rooted in the word of God, but then there's some policy things and stuff like that that we have that we have inside there. Now, and I understand all that. I'm not trying to say discipline is bad. Please understand that's not what I'm saying at all. What I am saying is that we need to have priority. That's all I'm saying. We have to have priority. And we are seen in the world today. Now, some of my people might log off, might not like it. That, and, and I thank God for um, uh, Bishop Starnes. He said this in our um, in, in our council meeting. And I hope it's OK to say this. He said, when we get away from our foundational beliefs, that's what grounds us. Then that's when we have a lot of division and things such as that that happen within our denomination. And we're seeing those in some in some denominations now that I will not name, but you know. All right. And so uh, we can't get away from what grounds us. But what grounds us points us towards unity, but it's not necessarily unity. I, I hope you can understand that it can point us towards a focus of unity. But it's not necessarily unity. All right. We won't get to the word. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to really just home us in on what on what it means to be what it means to be unified. All right. Um, so. Um, so here it is. So biblical Christian unity uh, can sometimes be an unseen truth um, based on shared life through the saving faith in Jesus Christ.
All right, let me break all that down and say that again. That our unity can sometimes be an unseen truth based on shared life through the saving faith of Jesus Christ. All right. So let, let me try to um, try to explain what, what this could mean in, in some context for, for some people. Um, we all go through. So the Wesleyan quadrilateral, that's, that, let's, let's start there, says that we understand God by a few things. Tradition, scripture, reason, uh, our reasoning, and then our experiences, right? So um, those are four ways, and I think I said those all, I don't mind them being in order, but it's, that's the Western quadrilateral, all right? All right, so it says that we understand God by these four ways. This is how we, we do it by our reasoning, by our experience, by our tradition, and by scripture. Those are the ways that we understand the God we serve, right? But here it is. What I might read in 1 Corinthians might touch me differently because of what I've experienced. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And so my reasoning is different. And then my traditions are different. But we're all pointing towards a saving faith in Jesus Christ. So I might not have been. I might not have been um, gone through what you've gone through, whatever it is. But it but we serve the same God and it was the same faith that grounded us that keeps us pushing towards God. Right. So I might not have experienced the trouble. I might not have the childhood you have. I might not have experienced the success or the downfall you have. But our saving faith in Jesus Christ, the salvific power of Jesus Christ, which is the saving power of Jesus Christ, points us towards sanctification and holy and, and holiness. All right. Um, let's get to where first Corinthians 12 and 13. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. And I got my Bible today. I didn't put nothing up on the screen for y'all. I got my Bible today. I was out there in that hot sun. Y'all pray for the past. I think I got a little dark. I thought I left North Carolina all that sun alone. But I came down here and it was hot today. 1 Corinthians 12. 12 and 13. Yeah, I got my Bible. You know, my mom used to do that. She'd take her finger and do like this. Yeah, she did it all the time. Did it all the time. That's what she did. I used to wonder why she did that. See, I got a little older. This is what the word says. We're going to start at 12. We're going to start at 12 and 12. It says, for just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body through many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of the spirit. We can really just have Bible study on that. Hey, Brother Miles, how you doing, man? Good to see you on here. Good to see you on here. Listen, I'm going to read it again just for your listening pleasure. For just as the body is one and many members, and all of the members of the body through many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. All were made to drink of the whole of, of the same spirit. So why 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 would somebody say why is he focusing on the church so much? Right, not me. I'm talking about Jesus, really, because what well, not Jesus? This is um, um this is the Apostle Paul. We write into the church in Ephesus. But why are we focusing on the church so much? We have to understand what the significance of the church is. The significance of the church, and I need to make sure everybody understands this because society causes you to tarnish what God sanctions and loves. All right. Because when we see all of um, the horrible things that are happening in churches, all of the things that, you know, you got somebody getting robbed over here for this amount of money and get all the, we, we, we think that when you talk about church, I hear it all the time. Ain't nothing but crooks, thieves, and all the church won't is your money. That's amazing to me that that's what we think about the bride of Christ. Because when we get back to the intent of the church, the church intent was to do one thing, and that's to make disciples. And that's one thing that's really a part of um, the foundation of the Amazon church, to make disciples. All this extra stuff we do, I ain't trying to say God ain't pleased with it. See, see, this might need to come in close. So I can stop being on Facebook so the whole world can hear what I got to say. I Listen, let me tell you something. I'm not trying to say God ain't pleased with our special days and our observances and all this other stuff. But God, listen, we to make the go ye therefore. Right. The church is the bride of Christ. It is supposed to be the conduit of the Holy Spirit that goes out and does wonderful things. Listen, we're so concerned about um, things that don't matter. 
they used to say you major you major in minor things and minor in major right and so all this other stuff you know it, all this other stuff is for us i'm gonna tell y'all that right now all this other stuff that we do is for us we, we don't really we don't it ain't some of this stuff ain't got nothing to do with God. Some of this stuff is just what we want to do because it makes us feel good, makes us uh, makes us all gittery on the inside. And somehow um, we have pleased God in our pious ways of what we do. Have you made a disciple? I don't care how many church services you've attended. Have you made a disciple? Have you led somebody to Christ? Thank you, uh, Reverend Donnell. Have you been fishermen of men? Yeah. Listen, let me say this. Not how many people didn't join the church because you because you invited me. No. How many people have you led to Christ? Yeah. How you say for 60 years ain't led nobody to Christ? You you ain't, I mean, you ain't you ain't shared with nobody the goodness of Jesus Christ. Like you haven't talked to you haven't you haven't shared. Not, I've told you what, what witnessing is. Witnesses is just sharing your story. So you're trying to tell me that you haven't watered anything. Nobody can look at your life and say, I want to serve the God you serve. Not perfect. God, I, I am. Please understand. I am not perfect. But what I am saying is um, that sometimes we have misplaced the, the purpose, the value and the intent of the church. Lord Jesus, I'm getting called from the bishop. I'm going to get called from the bishop. All right. Let me get called from the bishop. So, first of all, we're unified under the Holy Spirit. And, and I tell I tell everybody that all the time that we're unified under the Holy Spirit. That's why we had the teaching of the Holy Spirit. And um, it is very imperative that you have a Holy Spirit filled church. Now, I'm the, I'm telling you right now, I'm from the old school. I didn't grow up Zion. But what everybody has to understand is if you really look at church history and the history of Zion, Zion was a pioneer in the Pentecostal movement. Azuzu Street, not, man, listen, that was the Zion church. Do you understand that Methodism was not birthed in tradition? Methodism was actually birthed in non-tradition. Uh oh, I just messed up y'all whole y'all been in church all your life. You didn't even know that. It, it, yeah, yeah, listen, man. Listen, he was a rebel. A rebel. Right? We've somehow boxed in the potential of the church. I don't know why I'm going down this road. I, I really don't know why I'm going. But listen, but here it is. So we just said, um, this is to unify us in the spirit, which Paul tells them. And he tells us that we have to preserve this. Now, we're going to deal with that word preserve in a moment, in a minute. Uh, but understand that he calls us to understand that you are one body with many members, which simply means that uni uniformity don't mean that everybody does the same thing. I don't need everybody in the I don't, I don't need everybody in the choir. I don't need everybody playing a musician. I, I'm, I'm playing an instrument. Don't need everybody preaching. You know, sometimes I go to some of these churches and everybody, a, an apostle, a bishop, a pastor, or something like that, and you got one member. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't, I don't understand it. Everybody ordained inside there, but about five people inside right there. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't anyway, I'm gonna get off that. Get off that, get off that, get off that. Get off that. He's given us different gifts different anointings to do different things right yes yes sister tommy one body many members so 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 this is what i i simply believe right um when i broke so so i was an adventurous child right and let y'all into me y'all would probably never guess um but i'm very shy right that was a joke. I'm not. But listen, listen. <laughs> but I was a very adventurous child. See, so in Germany, I was short, still a little short. That's all right. Okay, I got a big personality. So um, I was out. The monkey bars was too high for me to reach. I couldn't. I couldn't reach it. So, but right, I had to go to the top of the slide. Then I had to jump down. Right? Because I figured like this right here. If I can't get it, I can make a way. <laughs> so I went to the top of the slide. Everybody did this, and everybody did this. Right? And so I've been doing this all day, been doing this all the time. And so I go up there because I want to get on the monkey bars because I can swing to the other side. Then I jump down, but I got to get up there and I couldn't reach it. It was too tall. Right. And so and so what I did was I went to the top and then I jumped on. And then this time I, my momentum of my body went up too high and I came down and my right arm 
was behind my back. Broke my arm. Broke my arm. And, um, you know, my dad picking me up, running me to the doctor, this, that, there, blah, blah, blah. So I'm walking around here because we in Germany, so I got a sling all the way up here, right? And I remember my mama cooked fried chicken at night. I remember it. It was a drumstick. I know because I like to eat. So listen, yeah. I've been eating for a long time. <laughs> and I ain't tired yet. But listen, <laughs> but listen, I was sitting there and I remember I ain't never really eat with my left hand. This, that, third. And so while my arm was broke, I still had to live. Somebody's going to catch this for a moment. Uh -huh. So what my right arm couldn't do, my left arm had to end up doing. And so now it was that my left arm, while my right arm was broke, was doing everything that needed to be done. It was eating, it was riding, it was doing everything it needed to needed to do. So much to the point that when my cast came off, this hand began to be a little dominant. Even now, if I play basketball or something like that, I'll shoot with my left hand versus shoot with my right, just because I I just I broke this hand before, right? I broke this arm before. And so what happens is I didn't stop living. Catch it. I didn't stop living. But what I had to know was that I had many members in one body. I, 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 want, I want you to catch this. I had many members in one body that kept living. So when one was hurt and injured, the other one picked up the slack while giving the other one time to heal. So in other words, it didn't retire the arm. It just said, while you're healing, I'll do the work. What would happen if the church could understand that there's parts of our church that has to heal, but we can't stop working? And here's the other thing. And you can't stop healing. Now, you, you we, we have to understand that we are one body, many members rooted in Jesus Christ. That's our unity. Because he did not give everybody the same gifts, but he unified us, unified us under saving grace. Right. So listen. So if you a preacher, preach. If you're an apostle, be an apostle. Right. He, he says it. Listen, if you're a teacher, teach. And embrace what God has given you. But, but here's the other thing. And you go back to the knowledge with my arm. When my cast came off. And my right hand had to start moving, it took time. You know, my right hand never got mad with my left. <laughs> I, I, it sounds funny. It sounds it, it sounds funny, but I want you to catch it. You know, my right hand never went behind my left hand's back and started talking about who he think he is. Using them four for them five phalanges in his elbows, like he was using. My, now I ain't never talk about that. They just started working together, but it's connected to one body, right? And so and so so these are some things. Uh, Ephesians four and three. Ephesians four and three. Listen, when y'all want me to stop, tell me. I stop now. I stop. I stop. So we talk about, and this is where the church has to really get into the mindset of is that pre preservation is key for tomorrow. Um, preservation is key for tomorrow. Um Preserve in, in, in a lot of times what people think about preserving is we think about things staying the same. That's not preservation. That's called dying. That That's I, I, I want you to catch that. Now, some of y'all might not like what I just said. God bless you. You can pray about that. Deal with it. Preservation does not mean staying the same. All right. It does, not, it, it, it does not mean that. Uh, the church should not have Benjamin Button disease. We should not be going backwards. All right. Wow. We, 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 we don't have that. Um, so uh, I use this analogy about preservation. And, you know, I know y'all, we in the big city of Chicago, but some country things really still hold true that when you want it to uh, maintain the freshness of something, I want you to catch it. You would preserve it. That's right. And you preserve it under tight pressure. Listen, this is what it says in Ephesians 4 and 3. It tells us this right here. Eager to, well, well let's start at 4. Unity in the body of Christ. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner 
worthy of your calling to which you have been called with all humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love. <laughs> all right. I want you to catch that in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Therefore, is one body with one spirit, just as you were called to be one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. All right. Let's talk about this thing for a moment. All right. Uh, I thank you, Dr. Crockett. I see you. That which does not grow will ultimately die. You ain't. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes. You better preach. Listen, let me tell you something. In the way you prayed Sunday, I wanted to get up and run. I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, let me say this. Um, when we talk about preserving. Um, a lot of times we think that if we just keep things the same, everything will be all right. So I, I, I did this teaching about serving the flock and I did it on the district. And we talked about how a lot of times um, you have people within the flock that feel like keeping things the same is their godly duty. That somehow advancing certain things whether it's infrastructure, polity, worship styles, this, that, and third, we feel like that if we get away from anything that is normal or anything that is uh, nostalgic, that we somehow have disrespected God, right? The disre or we have disrespected our ancestors, those who have labored so hard to get us where we are. But the problem is how dare you live what how dare you live in what they left but not creating anything to leave wow. I, I i want us to hear that we can't just be so selfish that we live in what they created that we're not creating anything to leave all right because they have gone through many toils and snares so we can be where we are and although you don't might not have the toils and snares that they have had we can't let comfortable places let us do comfortable ministry that 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 does not yield good results all right and so preservation is not retention all right that's not what preservation is what they mean about preservation is keeping the Holy Spirit amongst the bond of unity. I, I really want you to understand what they're talking about. The preservation that they're talking about is the Holy Spirit that is that should and shall remain within the body of Christ. Not your traditions, not your norms, not your thoughts, not none of those things, but the Holy Spirit. Um, I think when we talk about uh, preservation and we start talking about um, the things that we practice, um, it becomes a situation that we stray away from um, really knowing that uh, the Holy Spirit is what deepens us in order to touch God. All right. So um, when we're preserving things, thinking that it's our godly duty. Sometimes in the fact that we're not preserving, but we're we're actually destroying, tearing down, and not and not guiding. Um, so 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 here it is. Let me say it like this here. Maybe we might understand it uh, uh, this 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 way. If I'm trying to preserve what I want, which might be rooted might be rooted in traditional things that have been done, and this that and third, because that makes me feel good. My question is. What happens when the world moves on and everybody else stays at uh, Dr. Richard Chapel? Uh, when I first came into ministry, probably back in 04 sometime, I was 04, he did, uh, I think Bishop Richard Thompson bought him in to do, uh, it was either like School of the Prophets or some teaching, and he said something that was so profound, it still rings out today. So, Richard Chapel, if you're hearing this, I'm using your bro. This is not this is not my quote. This is his. The church is the only place where we want everything to stay like this. But want to experience this. 
I know what you're gonna say. All the hymns of the church, they they sacred, they holy. Well, I I I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get what you're saying. I, I get I get what you're saying. Um, they all come from hole in the wall songs anyway, but don't don't worry about that. That's a whole nother study, whole nother teaching for you. But it's 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 we they go out into the world. This is what he said. They go out into the world, they get this. They got this. They got cell phones. They got video games. They have YouTube. They have um, Instagram, IG, straight flexing, Twitter, everything else. They got all this stuff. They got Spotify now. They don't have DHS tapes. Listen, they got downloads. You understand what I'm saying? Like they don't have all this stuff. They don't have CDs. They got MP. They got MP3s and EP4s. They don't have all this other stuff. And so they get all of this is at their fingertips. They can get it this, that, and third. And when they come to church, they get this. This is what they get. Because we think preserving our nostalgic ways somehow honor God's when it's really just really tickles you. All right. And so we got to understand when it talks about preservation, not of traditional things, but of the Holy Spirit that bonds us together in unity. Is this making sense to anybody? I want to make sure I'm, I'm teaching this what folks be now. All right, so here it is, here it is, here it is. So when we're in unity, not only are we preserving, but we're also perfecting. All right, we're also perfecting. Um, let's go down to Ephesians 4 and 13. Ephesians 4 and 13. This is what it says. Until we all attain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature personhood, to the measures of stature, to the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro um, by the waves that carry us about every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness, by deceitful schemes, rather speaking the truth in love we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head unto Christ. So in other words, I want to go up a little bit further than that as well, because I want to make sure that we get where we at. Um, so if we go up to verse 10, no, 11, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, the teachers to equip the saints for the work of the uh, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body. One and one method says for the perfecting of the saints. All right, for uh, for the perfecting of the saints. So when when we're talking about preserving, these are the things that we're talking about. All right, the these are the things that we're talking about. Okay, um, so 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 when we're so when we're dealing with um, preserving and when we're dealing with unity, it is for the perfecting of the saints. We are not perfect, but when we're rooted in truth with God, that's what we're striving towards. This is not tell people all the time. If you perfect, you don't sin, you got nothing wrong with you. This, that, that, I need you to go and die and go to heaven. I don't want you to mess up. I say it all the time. And I, I know that sounds harsh. Some of my past, you want me to die? No, I don't want you to mess up. You know, if you that perfect, God knows I don't want you to mess up. All right. I do not want you to mess up. But what I need for you to do is um, get going, go, go on, just tell God it's time. So you'll mess up because we're all on this journey um, for for perfecting ourselves. Questions, comments, concern. Anybody right? Question, comments, comments are concerned. Oh, nobody. Come on. Come on. Write it in there. Write it in there. Okay. All right. So thank you, Sister Gloria Smith. You said for the maturity. God knows I want to keep teaching this thing right here. Okay. <laughs> let's go and deal with it. Since you put it in there, let's, let's go and deal with maturity. So what does it mean to maturity? Right? When I was a child, I speak as a child, thought as a child, reasoned as a child. All right? But, and I'm paraphrasing the scripture, but when I grow up, I put away childish things. Right. Um, 
and, and we're talking about unity inside the church. So I need to make sure that we keep at the forefront that this is what we're talking about, right? Uh, because I believe that this is what we need to hear as a church. Here it is. Um, hey, brother Ned, I see you on here, man. What's going on, sir? All right. So, so when, when when we're talking about preserving for the perfect unity by growing, it simply means that the church is an organism. All right. And what an organism finds a way to do, it finds a way to keep living. Ask COVID nineteen. I'm sorry, COVID. What number is it now? V C V something 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 something. So I don't know what it is. Right. They find a way to keep living. Right. They find a way to keep surviving. I was watching this movie on Netflix. Um, I was bored. I, it's called Still Breathe. Or something. I don't know what it is. And this lady is a uh, car crash. I'm not car crash. Plane crash. She goes down. Uh, the two guys die. And then she's the only one on this secluded island, it seems to be. And um, and um, and so, hey, Sister Epps, how you doing? And so and so when she uh, and so she finds a way to keep surviving. Right. She finds a way to keep surviving. She finds a way to keep living. She finds a way to keep going. She breaks her ankle. She keeps going. She has to go under water. She has to hold her breath for a long time. Come back up. She gets breath. She goes back down. She keeps finding a way to keep living. Finally, she goes downstream and she gets rescued. She gets saved. Some fishermen find it. And here it is. But had she stopped breathing, she would have died. And so listen, listen, so, 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 so this is what the church has to understand. We have to learn how to keep breathing. And what is the breath? Holy Spirit. And what is the Holy Spirit? It's what binds us together in unity. When we stop operating under the Holy Spirit and start operating under our politics and politics, as my dad would say, <laughs> then we are not growing. I'll tell you what my dad would say. I didn't say I, I wouldn't say that. My dad say that. All right. <laughs> you know, those those um those we have. But listen, but listen, when we're preserving and we're going towards perfecting, there should there there should be some maturity within us. In other words, it, it there there are some there are a few things that um that once I've matured, uh, it makes me live out my Christian walk differently. Okay. Listen, listen to me. I want you to, I want you, you can't be the same mean person you were 50 years. You shouldn't be that person today. There ought, God, the Holy Spirit, I have lived in you enough to break that. And it, and, and it can't be because I'm just too old. I can't be mean anymore. No, it ain't that. <laughs> it, 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 no, it should be something in you, the Holy Spirit, that has bro broken that inside of you. You know, um, uh coach boone on uh remember the titan said uh you can't be the same mean cuss <laughs> that's what he said he said you can't be the same because there ought to be some something that grows in you how you deal with people have when i mature in holiness it changes you i i see you sister Inez jackson just uh this just who i am not acceptable yes man not acceptable Right. Because let me say the Holy Spirit makes the Holy Spirit makes me want to live right. Even when I don't want to do right. When I don't want to give Holy Spirit says give. Right. When I want to stop breathing, Holy Spirit says, no, you still got some breath inside of you. When I don't want to preach, Holy Spirit says, keep preaching. When I don't want to witness, keep it. That's the breath. And, and we have to understand as a church. I want somebody to catch this right here. When the church stops breathing. Talk, Davis. Talk that when the church stops breathing and the wind of God is no longer in us, we are dying and not maturing. All right. Well, listen, that, that's all I got for you tonight. I, I that, that that's all I got for you. But maturity, maturity. And I want us to leave, I want us to talk about that probably next time we come around. We want to talk about what does it mean to live a mature life in Jesus Christ now? Let me go and say this to you so I don't want anybody to get confused about it. Maturity is not based on longevity. Maturity is not based on longevity. All right. All right. But maturity is based on how much you're allowing the Holy Spirit to dwell in you. Now. 
I, I, again, it doesn't mean you're living a perfect life because we're moving towards perfection. But when I mature, I think differently because when I was a child, I spake as a child, thought as a child, reason as a child. But then I had to put away some childish things. And 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 listen, Martin Temple and those that might be watching this, not there, this might not be your cup of tea Bible study. But let me say this right here, because I don't believe in just leaving. Um, uh, I believe that Bible study ought to challenge us. Right. Oh, yeah. You ought you ought to leave some thoughts. I have some rhetorical thoughts um, here. Here it is. And here and here is my question. How mature are you really? How mature are you really? You know, <laughs> one of the churches I pastored, <laughs> I won't, I won't say which one. It wasn't this one. Um, I remember when I first got there, and we had a conversation about ministry, and nobody had much to say. Everybody just kind of looking around and. Everybody was just kind of, you know, looking around. So I moved on from that part of the members meeting. I said, all right, well, last order of business, we have to uh, figure out um, the floor we're going to put in the back. That conversation went on for about an hour. <laughs> and they said, Pastor, what's your thoughts? And I said, we care more about the color and material of the floor than the ministry and the souls that can be saved. Where is our maturity in Christ? Where is our maturity in Christ? And we have to think about it as a church and mature Christians might come to the realization that how God is blowing with his wind. I can't be like the voice that spoke to Saul. Why do you kick against the pricks? Listen, I got to go. I got to go. I got to leave. I got to leave y'all because I keep going on. Uh, but just food for thought. Where are you? Where is your maturity level? in God, right? Because, Jesus, the way we operate in kingdom is not the way you operate in carnal. Mm -hmm. do you think about that for a moment. The way we operate in kingdom order is not world order. You are in this world, but not of it. So the way I politic on my job is not what I bring into the church. I got to go. Listen, listen, I, I got to go. I talk to y'all. I will, I will see y'all Sunday morning. If I don't see y'all on, on Thursday night, uh, I love y'all with the love of Jesus Christ. Listen, if there's any, any uh, things I need to pray for, we want to keep Sister Maker in prayer. Keep uh, Bishop Jared in prayer. Um, we want to keep Martin Temple family as a whole and pray any other people we could pray for. Just, just shout the names out and I want to shout them out with you. Can we do that? Can we do that? Just, just put them on there and we'll do it. Oh, can you pray for, um, the young, the young people going back to college or going to college? Yes. Yes. Cause it's going back. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's yeah, right. Potential shooting out there at NT. Well, you know it's AT, so. Hey, listen. <laughs> 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 I so one of the youth from from Grace is actually going to AT. Yes, her name is Christian. Yeah, Christian. Yep. All right. Tell my buddy I said hello when you get there. That's my buddy. All right. Um, all right. So listen, we're we're uh, we're going to travel the mercies from Maryland. Coming to Chicago. Yes, we're going to print Traveling Mercy, Stand Champion, a musician friend. Yes, sir, we'll definitely do that as well. Anybody else? Anybody else? I just want to pray for you. We're going to pray right now. Just lift your hands wherever you are. Father, for every outstretched hand and lifted hand, God, be it virtual or in this space. 
God, we pray, Lord, that your hand would move upon their hand, Lord, in the concerns of their heart, Lord. I pray, God, that it would be answered. If there's any sick among us, would you heal? If there's anybody who's uh, downhearted, God, would you lift them back up? Lord, if there's anybody, Lord, who might need encouragement, would you encourage? Lord, I pray, God, for near and far, for um, for the patient that's in the hospital, God, I pray, Lord, that you would touch them. Sister Maker, continue to heal her body and, and do miraculous things in her life, God. I also pray, Lord, for the members of Martin Temple, Lord, and I pray, Lord, that you would continue to do what you're doing in the midst and the atmosphere of this place. God, we love you and we thank you, God. As we depart from this teaching session, God, we pray that you would never depart from us, Lord. God, we thank you and we love you. In the name of Jesus, we count it done, knowing, God, that your hand is powerful to do all. Lord, so for all the kids that are going back to school, God, we pray, Lord, that you would cover them by your power. God, we pray, Lord, that you would touch every campus, God, every college campus, every high school, middle school, uh, grammar school, elementary school, daycare, God, uh, whatever it is, God, I pray, Lord, that you would give the teachers rejuvenated strength. God, Lord, to deal with the youth of today. God, I pray, Lord, that those that are going to college, Lord, will understand that it's just not a fashion show, Lord, but it is a show about educational fortitude, Lord, and how they can grow and succeed. God, I pray, Lord, for good grades. Lord, we pray, Father God, for high GPAs. We pray for favor upon their lives, Lord, right now, that every financial aid will be taken care of, every bill, room, and board would be covered, God. We pray right now in the name of Jesus, no lack in anybody's life, anybody's educational endeavors, God. Lord, we just pray, God, that you would cover, touch, heal, and do what you do. God, we pray, Lord, for the city of Chicago schools, Lord, right now, as they're going back. God, we pray for every bus driver, every safe passage worker, Lord. We pray for everybody, God, Lord, we pray, Lord, that the violence would be decreased. Lord, we pray, God, that um, the uh, God that the rate of kids not going to school would change, Lord, and they would be in there. But God, we pray that the teachers, Lord, God, just don't show up for a check, but show up to change lives in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. God, be a healing power, be a healing force, be our rock when we're tired, be our leaning post when we're weary, God. In Jesus' name, we somebody wants to lose faith. I don't know who it is, God, but I hear you in your spirit. Somebody wants to lose faith, God, but God says that your faith will not waver and do not let it fail. For in due season, hear me now, you will reap if you faint not. So whoever is on the brink of fainting, God says it's not your season to faint, but your season to succeed is right next door. I pray, God, Lord, that we would continue to hold your hand as you're holding our hand. You'll continue to gird our faith, Father. God, as our faith is girding you, God, Lord. And if there's anything, God, any tears that are falling, God, we bottle our tears and we pour it on your feet right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God, Lord. And we say, God, it is yours to carry, God, and we'll carry your burdens for your word declares, God, Lord, that you'll take upon our yoke, God. Lord, we'll take upon yours for yours is easy, it's light, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. So we say thank you for the promise of being a yoke bearer. Thank you, God, for the promise of being a healer. Thank you, Father. The promise of being a deliverer. Thank you, God, for being a protector and a coverer in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, Amen. God bless you all. We'll see you all next time. And uh, we love you with the love of Jesus Christ. Take care.